the one sample t-test is used for testing hypotheses about population means. It is designed to compare a sample mean against some predetermined standard or baseline. For example, in 1999, the NBA made some rule changes designed to increase scoring and hopefully increase attendance at basketball games. Conduct a one-sample t-test to determine whether or not there was a statistically significant improvement in scoring. The key to implementing the one-sample t-test is to determine a reference value or a baseline. In this example, the baseline is the previous year's average score of 183.2 points per game. If the scores in 1999 are greater than 183.2, then scoring has improved. Otherwise, scoring has not improved. The first step is to set up the hypotheses. When performing significance tests, there are two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is called the null hypothesis, and it is a statement that represents the baseline or status quo. In this problem, the null hypothesis is a statement that the rule changes made no difference, and that this year's average score is the same as last year's. The null hypothesis is always represented using an equality or an equal sign. So for the null hypothesis, I would say that the true population mean mu is equal to 183.2, and what this means is that the rule changes made no difference. The second hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis, and it is a statement of what the researchers hope to prove or suspect is true. In this case, most people would agree that NBA officials are competent and that they would be capable of designing rule changes to increase scoring. So our alternative hypothesis would be that the average score is greater than 183.2, and this means that the rule changes were effective. In general, the alternative hypothesis will be of one of three forms, a greater than, a less than, or not equals. In this case, we use the greater than option, and this is called a one-sided significance test. If you weren't sure which way to go, the safest bet is to do a not equals test, since this would test for differences in both directions. Our second step is to compute the test statistic. In this case, for the one sample t-test, the test statistic t is equal to the sample mean minus the null hypothesis mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size. So the first thing we need to do is to compute the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So open up StatCrunch, open up the Basketball 1999 scores, go to Stat, Summary Stat, Columns. Select the basketball column by clicking on it, and then select the statistics we want to compute. In this case, the sample size, hold down the control button, the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. Press compute, and now we can use these numbers in our test statistic calculation. The sample mean is 195.88. We want to subtract off the null hypothesis mean, the baseline value of 183.2, divide by the sample standard deviation of 20.27173, divide by the square root of sample size, square root of 25. Evaluate this expression on a calculator. This would evaluate to 3.12750. The test statistic that we have computed is a measure of the distance between the sample mean and the null hypothesis value. So in this case, that distance is a little bit more than three standard deviations, which is a pretty good sized distance. The third step will be to compute the p-value. Now, If the null hypothesis is true, then the sample mean will be close to 183.2, and the numerator of the test statistic will be close to zero, and we should end up with a distribution for the test statistic that is close to zero, may not be exactly equal to zero. And on the other hand, if the null hypothesis is not true, then we would expect that the value of the test statistic will be quite a bit larger than zero. In this case, the value of the test statistic is 3.12750. The p-value is the probability of obtaining a test statistic at least as extreme as 3.12750, and this would be the area of the right tail. The test statistic actually has a student t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. The sample size is 25 in this case. If we subtract 1, then that'll be 24 degrees of freedom. So we should compute 
the area on the right tail of a student t distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. And we can compute the p-value using the student t distribution calculator in StatCrunch. We can find it under Stat, Calculators, T. We would enter the degrees of freedom, in this case 24, and we want to calculate the probability of being greater than 3.1275, so I will change the direction for the probability to being greater than, and then enter 3.1275, press compute, and we obtain a p-value of 0.002287. The fourth step is to interpret the results. Remember, when interpreting p-values, the smaller the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis. So p-values are a lot like playing golf. The lower the score, the better off you are. In this case, the p-value is much smaller than 0 0.005. The value of 0 0.05 is just a reference value based on the opinion of one of the early statisticians, Ronald Fisher. There's nothing magical about this particular value. But since the p-value is so small, we have strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Hence, the improvement in scoring is statistically significant. For a more precise interpretation of the p-value, you would assume that the null hypothesis is true, since the p-value is computed under this assumption. If, in fact, the rule changes made no difference, then there is only a 0.22% chance of obtaining an average score of 195.88 or more.